this video we're going to look at how we create a 3D CAD model of the spatula. To start off we're going to use the Autodesk Inventor software. Now to find the Autodesk Inventor software you'll have to go to the CDT folder on your desktop, open the Autodesk folder and then go into Autodesk Inventor 2016. Now in this video I'm using a slightly newer version of Inventor but all the processes work exactly the same way. The appearance is just a little bit different. To start our file we're going to go to New we're going to make sure we select metric and we're going to choose standard millimeter IPT. We'll then click create. To start off our model, we're going to start 2D sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to sketch on this front work plane and choose the XY plane here. Looking at our model, we're going to start with a rectangular shape for the whole object. And then what we're going to do is subtract some of the shape away to help us out as we go. Our starting point will be to go 300 millimeters by 60 millimeters tall. We'll go in to the rectangle tool and select two point center rectangle. Usually it defaults to two point rectangle. We're going to choose two point center. We click in the middle and we extend it as big as we can and click. We'll choose dimension, we'll select this top line, click in the line once and then click in once above it and change your dimension to 300. You might now need to resize your page. You can do that either by clicking the front or you can choose the zoom all. Then what we can do is click dimension again, click the left hand side, click once, move out to the side and click again and choose 60. At this point what we can do is we can finish our sketch, click on the top right of our view cube and we have a rectangle shown in a 3D isometric view. If we click to view at the front we've got our rectangular shape that we can see here as if we were drawn around it just like we would start with our timber in the workshop and what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this to give it a thickness of 6 millimeters. Extrude adds some depth to any 2D profile. What we have just now is a 2D profile. It doesn't have any depth. Extrude will add that. We click Extrude. We'll click the profile we want, which is this rectangle, and it automatically selects that anyway. And then we'll change our distance to be six, and we'll make sure that it extrudes symmetrically, going either side, and we'll click OK. At this point I'm going to change my material just by choosing this tab up at the top. I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to choose one of the wood materials here. I'll just use yellow pine so it looks a little bit more realistic at this point. What I can then do is start a sketch on this front surface. So again I can click here first and then click the front of my extruded bit of material. Looking back at our drawing I'm now going to start to add in some of the extra information that we need. I'll start off by adding the circles in the correct position and then we'll extrude them and subtract them away from the object. I'll need to use the diameters of each circle here and then I'll need to use the distances to work out the spacing. The good thing is all of these circles are spaced along the centre of the spatula. I'll place the four circles just by clicking once, moving my mouse out and clicking again just to get different sizes, not really worrying about their position just now. Once I have the four circles, I'm going to use dimension to add the four different sizes. We do this by clicking dimension, clicking the outside of the circle and then clicking again and enter in our value. Click the next one, click out again and then put the size. Click once, click out to the side and add the diameter. At this point you can see we've now got our diameter 10, diameter 25, diameter 20 and diameter 35 circles. However they're spaced 
slightly differently throughout. We've got 25 between the edge here and the centre of this circle, 40 between these two centres, 70 between these two, and 60 between here. To dimension these, we click the left hand side and then the centre of the circle, and then click once more above here. We can then click the centre of this circle and the centre of this one, and place the dimension above, and enter our size, click once, click again, and click above, just confirming that we have the right size, so 70 and then 60, and the last one, clicking dimension between there, there, and then clicking once up above. Now that we have the four circles in the correct position, I can finish the sketch, spin my object round by clicking the top right of the view cube, and then I can use extrude. This time I'm going to select each one of the circles, I might need to zoom in by rolling my mouse in, wait until it's highlighted and clicking once, wait until it's highlighted and each time click the inside of those circles. Now just now it's trying to add the material to our object. We want to change it from adding the material to subtracting the material. You may also have to change the direction of what way it's facing. Once you have the four holes in position and highlighted and your depth is correct, you can also change it to go through all and it means it will go through all surfaces. You can then click OK. We're starting to see the proper shape of our spatula. We've got a couple other features that we'll be able to add in as we go along. We'll now click on the front again and we're going to create yet another sketch. Click start sketch, click on the front. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. You can see that we've got a radius 25 curve here which is slightly narrower than our height of 60. Our radius 25 would be doubled to give a diameter of 50 which wouldn't quite touch the edge of our 60 size. However the centre of this curve is the same as this circle here. What we will do first of all is we will project the geometry by clicking this symbol here and then clicking this surface. This adds the outline onto our shape. We will then use circle, click the centre of the first circle here and then move out to here. What we can do is we can actually snap it onto the edge over here. Then what we're able to do is we'll be able to snap on the size from this circle to our position for the curve that's shown here, which starts 100 millimeters from the end. To help with this, I'm going to change to have a construction line. I'm going to change to the line tool, and I'm just going to draw a line somewhere along this first part here, clicking once, and then clicking again. I can then right click my mouse and click OK. This construction line won't show up in the final object, it won't even be considered for extrusions. But what it will do is it will allow us to place a starting point for our curve. We'll use dimension to click the right hand side, then this line and click above to give the 100mm spacing. Then what I'm able to do is use the arc tool and it's the 3 point arc tool to click from here to somewhere on the edge of our circle. Probably the best point is the top here. Once we have that, we can choose the size of our curve. Now this would vary depending on what you have in the workshop. We're going to click and then add a dimension to it later on. Now you can see just now that this has still come in as a construction line. In order to change that, I push escape on my keyboard, click once on the line and untick this option here. It then becomes a solid line. And click in here. I'll then dimension 
to get my size at 400 and this size at 400. What you'll probably also notice is that we have some extra lines now. If we tried to extrude it, it would cause us a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim these excess lines. We're going to trim away this outside point here, this one here, and then this one here. And you can see now we have more of the shape that we've been expecting. The only issue I've found now is that part of this curve seems to have moved along. If that's happened, what I should be able to do is just drag that slightly back into position so that it doesn't overhang the edge of my object. Now we have the shape correct, what we'll be able to do is extrude and subtract the rest of the material. Click my finish sketch, spin onto an angle just so I can see it more clearly, and then I'll be able to use extrude, select the outside of the shape, again choosing to subtract, and then using the option to cut through all. I can then click OK and you see now I have very close to the shape of the spatula. The only thing that we have missing is that we don't have the little 45 degree slope on that front facing edge. To do that we don't need to go into sketch mode, we can use a command called chamfer. Chamfer will add a 45 degree slope to any edge of a surface. By clicking chamfer and then choosing the edge you want to chamfer, you are then able to choose a distance in order to remove the material. Because our material is 6mm thick, I'm going to change our distance to 6 and then click enter or OK. At that point, I've been able to complete the spatula and add my 45 degree slope to the front using chamfer. What we've been able to see is that if we start off with a basic square shape and extrude that, what we're then able to do is add other sketches onto the front surface of the object, add sketches to them, add dimensions to them, and then use extrude to subtract different pieces of material away before using some of the edits to add different features. For example, what we could also do is use fillet Select quite a small radius of 0 0.5 and then add a small round edge to each of these surfaces around the perimeter of the object. When they go blue they are selected and that would be the equivalent of us adding a small sanded round edge which we would probably be doing in the workshop. Once we have them selected we can click OK and you can see now that all of the edges have been slightly rounded as if it would have been sanded. Once you've completed it, you need to make sure you go to File and Save As and you must make sure you save it in your H drive. That's the drive named after your username.